are an NGO focused on representing the consumer's voice with regards to public transport. And I think in Malaysia, we are the only NGO that speaks up on public transport issues. So for better public transport, what do we need? I'm going to talk about five components today. Uh, first is a complete city-wide network. That means from anywhere within KL or the Klang Valley, any person should be able to use public transport to go from one location to another. From anywhere in Shiraz to Subang Jaya, from PJ to Kajang and Klang to KL, anywhere to anywhere within the Klang Valley, you can hop on a form of public transportation to go there and you do not need to use your car. Now, for some of y'all who have been to Singapore, you know you can do this. Uh, places like Hong Kong, uh, New York, you can do that with public transport. Uh, but sadly, within KL, uh, it is very limited with the public transport that we have. And partly with the promotion of proton cars, subsidized petrol has fueled the interest in cars. But at the same time, a lot of people have no choice but to buy a car. Because without a car, you can't get to your work, you can't get around to your relative's house, your friend's places, and so on. So people are forced to drive cars and that results in our massive traffic jams. Then we also need a proper information system for public transport. Uh, right now, if you want to take a bus from in front here to go to Rawang, how many of you know how to get a bus? There is no proper information system. You don't have a website where you can key in from where to where. And they tell you, take this bus, change the bus there, change the bus there. This is how you get from one place to another. Little posters on the bus stop, maps on the bus stop, some app for your iPhone and for your, uh, your Samsung phone. You know, to tell you what bus to take from where to where. This one doesn't cost money. doesn't cost much money to build. Nowhere near 1 billion, right? Nowhere near 100 million or so, right? Nowhere near 10 million or so, right? Tiny fractions of the money. But instead, Commando is choosing to spend big money rather than small money. So, reliable. Uh, this is something you're also very famous for. Are our buses adhering to any schedule? Do they arrive on time? Do they depart on time? No. It's important for public transport to be reliable if we are as serious about people using it. We cannot expect people to wait there without knowing 10 more minutes, uh, half an hour more, the bus come. Then we late for work and all that. It must be safe. Uh, we mustn't fear that we will get robbed on the bus. We mustn't fear that the bus will crash down a cliff and we will, we will die or get injured. And finally, it must be affordable. Any form of public transport must be affordable. We cannot charge people 10 ringgit per train ride and ex expect people to use public transport. And that is one problem we have in Malaysia today or so. If you are staying outside of KL, say in Shah Alam, if you are going to take two buses and a train, you change two buses and a train to reach KL to go to work, quite likely you will end up paying more than driving the car. And that is not right because then that does not encourage people to use public transport. But let's look at the first point, the complete city-wide network. I think that is very crucial if you are serious about improving public transport. You need uh, a form of network which will get people from any one point to another point, regardless of if they use rail, MRT, LRT, commuter, regardless if they use bus or tram or even walking. So any form of public transport. And to do this, we should have a master plan. And Transit has been voicing to the government. Uh, we talked to the Economic Planning Unit in the Prime Minister's Department since 2008 regarding the importance of a master plan. So finally, they agreed to do a master plan. And now it has been released a few months ago, the final draft of the master plan. But guess what? Before the master plan can come out, the Sungai Bulo Kajang line can come up. The infrastructure project that is costing billions of ringgit can come out first before the master plan. So when the master plan come out and justify that we need this MRT, you've got to wonder, master plan produced to justify the spending or the spending was necessary and due to study and due process. So this is something very suspect. So we wonder, how effective is, is this MRT? Now, if you look at public transport, the, the, the first principle of public transport is we want to connect any point to every point in the city to each other to enable people to move around seamlessly. 
Now this is the key thing to public transport. But however we see the government and Pemandu's approach to public transport is different. They are deploying a few selected routes for uh, LRT and MRT lines. This is high uh, capex expenditure, high amount of construction and, and, and well it's lucrative projects to be given to whichever party that gets the project. But we don't see the action of completing the network. And then we have cost concerns. Can we afford to put railway lines from everywhere to anywhere in the Klang Valley? The whole MRT three networks, three lines, are uh, looking at over 60 billion ringgit of construction costs. So can we afford to put so many uh, MRT lines, LRT lines, monorail lines all over the Klang Valley? That's something that we seriously need to be concerned when we produce a master plan. And because of that, it is impossible to rely solely on rail. You need to have buses to complement rail to produce the network to cover the whole Klang Valley. How many percent of KL can use the MRT? How many percent of KL lives within walking distance of the MRT station and is going to somewhere else, a shopping place or working place, which is also within walking distance to the MRT station? How many? Not many. A lot of KL isn't within walking distance. A lot of the Klang Valley isn't within walking distance to the station. Let's look at some other re re more realistic examples. Singapore. Singapore has a population of 5 million over 710 square kilometers. The bigger a city is, the more buses you need to cover the whole area and to move people from one end to another. The more population you have, the more buses you need to move people around. But in addition to the MRT routes, it has 3,200 buses on the streets, public buses, to serve this population. And the bus ridership in Singapore is higher than the train ridership every day. Hong Kong, a larger population, 7.8 million, uh, a bit larger area, 1,100 square kilometers, but they have amazing 6,000 double decker buses and 4,000 mini buses. And who will not deny that Hong Kong has a good MTR, they call it over there, a good underground rail system, don't they? Yet they have so many buses, they have this amount of buses. London, 7 million population, over 1,600 square kilometers. They have 7,500 buses in addition to about 12 underground tube rail lines. In addition to a number of overground uh, national rail which is similar to our KTM commuter. That's why people don't need to have a car in London. Can you guess Klang Valley? How do we stand? This is the answer. We have about 6 million population according to Pomandu's report. We have about 2,800 square kilometers, quite big, the Klang Valley, Greater KL as defined in Pemandu. But Pemandu is targeting under their government transformation plan. They want to transform public transport, but they, want, they are targeting 1,450 buses. From 850 buses, they want to increase to 1,450 buses. You have a much bigger area than the cities above. You have comparable populations, more than Singapore, bigger than Singapore in size, bigger in Singapore in population. You have less efficient rail compared to Singapore. Shouldn't you have more buses than Singapore? Isn't that a logical conclusion? You have nearly the same population as London and Pemandu's report say we expect to grow to 10 million by 2020. We are bigger than London. We are nearly reaching London's population. Don't you think we should have somewhere closer to London's quantity of buses. These are cities that I've given you above that effectively move people by public transport. One billion ringgit can buy 2,000 buses and provide employment to so many potential bus drivers. All right? And we can get the thing up and moving very much faster. We and Transit have always argued our question. Is Pemandu sincere in promoting be be better public transport? Or is Pemandu there to provide for mega infrastructure projects? We have raised this many times, but the ministers remain mega project.